final programme in this course is an adventure game. If you're familiar with text-based exploring games, you'll have an idea of how this works. So I'll just show it to you in action first. So I'm building it here in Lazarus. Now let's see where I am. I click the Look button. It tells me I'm in room zero. It's a dank cavern. And here I can see three objects. A bit of fluff, popcorn, and a coin. And each object has a name and a description. And if I want to take an object, I enter its name into this text field and take. It says, OK, popcorn taken. I can verify that by looking again. This time, the popcorn is no longer in this room. And I look at my inventory. That's the objects that the player holds. And I have a lamp. And I started off at the outset of the game with a lamp. And I also have popcorn. If I drop the popcorn, popcorn still entered in the text field. OK, popcorn is dropped. Inventory, I no longer have the popcorn. Look, the popcorn's back in the room. And I can move around the map by clicking the various buttons here. There's no exit on the left. Exit on the east leads to room one. I can't go there again, so let's go back to the west. South, I go to room two. Let's have a look what's here. OK, there's nothing here. Um, let's see what I've got in my inventory. I've got a lamp. I can drop that. OK, lamp dropped. South again. Room four. Look here. OK, there's a wombat here. Let's take the wombat. OK, wombat taken. Inventory. Yep, I've got the wombat. Go north. Look here. That's where I dropped my lamp, so the lamp is still in this room. And so you can see that I've created a map of rooms and various objects, various treasures, that I can collect and I can drop. Let's have a look how this is done. So, let's move this out of the way. This project has a number of files. It's got add consts, where I declare some constants, and I can use these to refer in my code to constant names, such as no exit north, south, west, and east, rather than just numbers. Wombat main, that is the code that goes with the user interface, the form, and this has functions to display the things, to create my objects, and the various event handling methods that execute when I click the buttons. And advobs. This really is the most interesting uh, unit in this code. This is the unit that contains all the code of all the objects, all the class types that I've defined. So the basic class is called thingob. You can see it's got two private variables, a name and a description. And it's got name and description properties. It's got some other methods to write and read from stream, which I'll look at presently in another video. But let me just go through the rest of the class hierarchy. ThingHolderOb is a descendant of ThingOb. So ThingOb is the base for all my special adventure game classes. ThingHolderOb, of course, inherits name and description, so it doesn't need to re-implement those. But it adds on a t-list. Remember, a t-list is a type of collection, a collection of objects. And that's what I use to maintain lists of objects. And it's got functions to get and set the things in that list, to add something to that list, and to find if a name exists in that list. And that's useful when I'm looking for a name, say I enter Wombat, and I want to find if Wombat is in the list that's maintained, for example, by the current room. And there are various other methods there. This is explained in more detail in the little book of Pascal, so take some time to read over that as well. Roomob. Roomob descends from thingholderob, so it has name and description, which it inherits from thingob, and it also inherits a list of things and all the list management capabilities that were defined for thingholderob. So that looks after the list of treasures that might be found in a room. And it adds on four exits, north, south, west, and east. These are, again, private integer variables, and I provided properties for reading and writing them. 
Akta Ob. Akta Ob is an interactive character. You could have many different Akta Obs. If you use this as the basis to develop your own adventure game, you might have a thief character, for example, that moves around rooms taking things. In fact, in my game, I only have one Akta Ob, and that's the player. It represents the player of the game. The player of the game has to be able to move around the map and so has to maintain a position, and the position is an index into the list of rooms which are maintained by this next class, which is the map ob. The map ob also has a function to get a room, so if I pass it an index into the room, if I say I want room number two, it goes and sees if it's got that room, and it returns the room object. And finally, implementer. Implementer is not a character in the game. Implementer represents the, if you like, the god of the game. It's like the chess player. If this was a chess game, it, an implementer would be the thing that moves the pieces around the board. In this case, it can move the player around the map, and it helps with saving and loading the game. So look through the source code, paying particular attention to the obs unit, which has all the code to create the class hierarchy and to deal with the details of saving and loading games, which I'll be explaining presently.